Bloomberg's looking to unseat President Trump in 2020, not going to be happy with Mark Cuban. The billionaire is saying the current field of Democratic contenders don't stand a chance. Cuban also not ruling out a presidential run of his own as an independent. Watch. I've said it many times. It would take the perfect storm for me to do it. So there's, there's some things that could open the door, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not projecting or predicting it right now. Who do you think on the Democratic side right now has the best chance against Nobody. President Trump? Nobody right now. If you look at the Democratic field, it's all politicians. And politicians are the least trusted of every profession. And so, you know, it's, it's just it's too early to tell. Shannon, he may be right. I mean, he's a reality TV star. Uh, and he's saying you need somebody with that kind of profile to defeat Donald Trump. What do you think? Yeah, I think when he talks about this, that the Democrats have shades of Ross Perot, like a total freak out time, just like when Howard Schultz talks about it or any of these other independent people that actually have name recognition, they've got money, they've got connections, they have the idea and they could move forward. When you think about how Ross Perot changed the trajectory of Bush 41, not having a second term, I think someone like Mark Cuban makes the Democrats very nervous because of what he brings to the table more so than Schultz even yeah because I think he's uh, he's done the whole reality TV thing I think he's uh, you know he's mixed it up with Trump before I could see them going toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe and both of them really enjoying it so Jesse you're mm -hmm. a guy who gets down to the basics I see this campaign <laughs> as Mark Cuban saying hey that's a fake billionaire I'm a real billionaire vote for me yeah when I uh, teased him about it to his face I said you're just jealous that another billionaire celebrity ran for president and won and he goes I'm not jealous Trump's not a billionaire <laughs> <laughs> and then I told him that we were doing the segment today and he said tell Greg I'll have the cramps play at the inauguration oh, oh. he's got my vote so there you go he's got my vote he's got he, Greg's vote he's a cramps fan I know, which is amazing I know. and I like him I'm not a Mavericks fan they're not doing too well but I like him to he speaks his mind and the only thing is I think this he's just floating this run out there because he's trying to boost his brand a little mm -hmm. bit and get his name in the news but if you think about if he does run who does he take votes away from so I ran his platform positions through the matrix oh. and we found out he's like a taller better looking Mike Bloomberg <laughs> with a hint <laughs> of libertarian Ron Paul and a splash of ACLU so bottom line, he's not going to run, so it doesn't matter. But he did say something else interesting. So far, the Democrat proposals have been all headline porn. That's a great I word. I don't think mm. they believe what they're proposing is passable. And it's true. If you think about the gun grabbing, the socialized medicine, the Green New Deal, that's never going to get passed. They even put the Green New Deal up to a vote in the Senate, and every single Democrat <laughs> abstained. Yeah. So Dana, he did say that nice things about Joe Biden. He said Biden is a smart guy. And he could do a good job. He just doesn't think he has the pizzazz. The, uh, well, he, so he uses a word, charisma. And, you know, we look into, there's 24 candidates now. And you listen to a lot of their sound bites. And who grabs the ear? Right. If you think about it, if you're in the rate, if you're in the car, is, is, you're not, not everybody's glued to their television. Although, thank you for watching. Um, <laughs> I mean, from five but to six. If you think about it, it's the charisma. Who, who, who makes you want to listen? Yeah. And it, if you listen to Mark Cuban, like he calls in, he doesn't even have to be in the studio. He's like Trump, right? He calls in. You know, Howard Schultz can't call in. Mm -hmm. Right, that's not going to happen for him. And in fact, I just don't know where he is right now. <laughs> yeah, when you're hot, they take you on the phone. Yeah, that's the rule. Exactly. Oh. I think maybe he's making. Remember coffee. when? <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Greg gets Go ahead. Doing no, that's too good. That was too good. But when the five first started, there was somebody who called into this show, but they were upstairs. There's yes. Oh, yeah. No, I, I will say that. that that was not. It was not Bill O'Reilly. It was not Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> because you want to make the record clear. And we realized he was upstairs. It was <laughs> definitely not Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> okay, so what what Cuban's saying is what we've been saying here for the last couple of months. What's missing is the electrifying non-politician, the fun unpredictable person who shuns all of the political platitudes who doesn't talk like a politician he, the Democrats don't have their Trump uh, and the thing is instead they have this I guess a, a 22 headed I don't know uh, 24 headed 24 headed jack-in-the-box and they all look the same in the old days we would say wow this is an impressive field look at all these people but because of 2016, now we go, there's just Man. way too many. I don't know who they are. It's just a big busload of, of talking heads. I don't get it. The weird thing is, is like, you know, that used to be good.
Now what's good is to have somebody who's not a politician, politician who's loud, who doesn't sound like a politician. When you look at Biden, that's all you see is politician. And it feels like when he's talking, you're watching a guy on crutches making his way down a staircase. At any moment, it's going to collapse and be ugly. Whereas you have somebody like Trump who could sit, talk for, for hours about slippery stages. And I, my point is this. Do the Democrats go for the comfortable sweater? in Biden who feels like something you're used to? Or do you go for that, you know, the, the, the jumpsuit that Evil Knievel wears when he went into the Snake River Canyon? <laughs> I think they should get the Snake River well, Canyon. Well, the thing is, it, you know, when you have a moment, it's a, typically politics runs in cycles. And I think after Trump, there may be a desire for some yeah. warm sweaters. sweaters and stability. Yeah, there sure will. That, you know, but, remember, there sure will. but remember, stable politicians, Juan, are every bit as dangerous as anybody else. They start wars. They do stupid things. We have an unpredictable president who might be the most peaceful president we've had. In, because uh, he doesn't want any... He doesn't want, some people down. call him a very stable genius. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you do that? Not, not, not you. Oh, okay. All right, all right. I will say they're both reality stars. So I guess that's the moment in American politics. All about being a reality TV. Yeah, maybe star. Snooki's gonna run. Oh, oh my God! I'd love that. They've all said they want a woman on the ticket. Hey. So there's your number two. There Kardashian, here she comes. Snooki. <laughs> Snooki. Oh my God! I'm gonna run. He's out a Republican. Of here. <laughs>